Welcome to the City Current Show. I'm your host, Jeremy Park. We're always honored to bring you inspiring stories of individuals and organizations making a difference, empowering the good. And we're honored to be talking about Baptist Operation Outreach in partnership with Christ Community Health Services. We're joined by Dr. Keith Norman. He's the Vice President and Chief Government Affairs and Community Relations Officer with Baptist Memorial Healthcare and Jan Taylor, Program Director for Baptist Operation Outreach. How are you two doing? Doing wonderful this morning. Thank you. And busy as ever with Baptist Operation Outreach. Yeah. Well, I'm doing well. I think uh, we are glad to be back out in the world and serving through this wonderful outreach uh, ministry that we developed and uh, glad to be doing what we love to do the most. Absolutely. Well, let's start with you, Keith. Give us some backstory on this partnership and a little bit of history for the context because it goes back to 2005. And so give us some history. So in 2005, based on data that we had from our community health needs assessment, we saw a growing trend that really had been developing over a few years where homelessness and other uh, uh, people were falling through the cracks when it came to health care. So Baptist and its outreach ministry uh, seeking to really uh, perform the ministry of Christ, which is preaching, teaching and healing, decided to take it to the streets. Um, we took the mobile outreach van where we provide free acute and primary uh, health care, disease management and support uh, to Memphians all over the place. We started out with about 500 patient encounters. And today we see more than a thousand patient encounters a year, probably more than that, uh, but at least a thousand. And COVID impacted us just a little bit, but we've been rolling ever since. Talk about why this is so important. I, I think, you know, it goes back, like you said, preaching, teaching, healing. That's a piece of this, mm -hmm. taking care of our, our neighbors, our community members. Yeah. But why is this so important to Baptist and to our community at large? Well, it's so important because if we're we are mission driven hospital, uh, we were founded at the at the very base of what Christ wanted us to do uh, for our neighbors, as you said. But our neighbor is everyone we come into contact with. And some of our neighbors don't do as well when it comes to health care. So in order to alleviate that burden, we found ourselves in other places. We're on Air Street now. We're at Mississippi Boulevard now uh, on, on Mississippi Boulevard at the Office of Recidivism and then at Catholic Charities. And basically anywhere else this nice lady will crank up and go to <laughs> and get us health care uh, where people have the need. One more question, then we'll switch over to Jan and yeah. really dive in. Talk about Christ Community Health Services, why the partnership with them is so important. Well, as you know, Christ Community Health Services is a federally qualified uh, health center, and they do an outstanding work. And so why duplicate a function when there's an existing opportunity? Collaboration and partnership is the way to take dollars and stretch them so much further. And so rather than trying to serve the same market in competition, we decided that it's good to collaborate. We know that we can take people and then give them a medical home at Christ Community Health Services, which fits their model, and we're able to work together to bring people to their optimal level of care. So Jan, Keith painted the picture, gave some history and context, also mentioned obviously some of the locations for the mobile clinic, but go ahead and dive in. When you talk about Operation Outreach, how do you paint the picture of the services and the power of what you're doing? I think the primary thing for us has been go. Go to where the people are address the barriers. Every barrier that we have seen over the years in trying to improve the quality of health care to the homeless people, together we've tried to address that. Right. We've tried to take that mobile van to the places that are most vulnerable and in the need and at the same time try to look and listen to uh, the people that are the individuals that are going through this homeless struggle and say, hey, what is it? How can we make this better? And over the years, that's exactly what we've been able to do in the partnership with Baptist and Christ Community is make it better, increase mm -hmm. the care. When we first started off in 2005, it was a nurse, it was a mobile van driver, and it was a CMA. And I think that first year we were able to service maybe 94 people. That was, that was 94 people. So when Keith was speaking of 
now this past year, we saw about a thousand. Of course, we know a lot of that was due to the constraints and the problems with COVID-19, but we have seen as many as 32, 3,300 visits in one annual year of care. Uh, that we've been to provide to the homeless patients and in, in our community. So, of course, now we understand and we realize that much of our goal now is to get people back on track with knowing that the mobile van is here, Baptist is here, Christ Community is here, our staff is here, not only with the van, but also with the stationary clinic as well, and trying to be in the neighborhoods and in the locations where the care is needed. We now do primary health care. We have a behavioral health provider on board. We've got dental coverage for our patients. We get our patients uh, worked up and seen by Southern College to provide them free glasses. Any referrals for diagnostic tests that our patients need, we send them to Baptist. Baptist. And it's of no charge to that patient at all. So our goal is to find out what is the need? What can we do to get this done? And we have done some wonderful things in helping the community, and we still have a lot of work to do. Talk about, you, you, you kind of alluded to all the different areas where you can really help. Maybe share a success story. You don't have to name a name, but talk about kind of, the, in other words, illustrate the process of, of, of meeting them, diagnosing kind of the challenges, and then putting them on the path to wellness. And so give us kind of an illustration of how the magic works. Okay, so one of our big stories is we had one patient who had came in and had been coming in for medical care for a long time and was beginning to come weary because she felt that she was not moving forward, even in spite of the fact that she had gone through a rehabilitation program, she wanted to do more. So the conversation with me took place a couple of times and I said, just hang in there. We're going to do more. So push comes to shove. Guess what? That individual is now my employee. Uh, we worked with Baptist, we worked with Christ Community, and I said, hey guys, it's time to do more. We provided quality health care. Now people need jobs. I said, and this is a young lady that is just struggling. And my heart says, my face says, we need to meet our mission. Mm-hmm. We met our mission. She is now an employee. She is now one of our health, uh, spiritual health advisors and doing a beautiful job uh, daily with our patients. That's just one story of many. Uh, We had a young man that came in, finished his program, got a job, and needless to say, his teeth were in really, really bad shape. He needed dentures. He needed all of the the bad teeth taken out, and he needed dentures. I worked with Baptist and uh, getting his uh, dental care done, and then we got him dentures. Mm -hmm. We knew that part of his problem concern was I now have this job, but I don't want people to see me and my mouth. His comment was raggedy. Mm -hmm. I I don't want to be in front of the public with my teeth looking that way. So working together, we were able to take care of trying to get him dentures. And we did that. That's awesome. Yeah. So when you look at the the growth and obviously you have more staff members now, you mentioned COVID-19 and having to make some pivots. And part of that was using telehealth and virtual. And so, Talk about some of the the recent developments, if you will, in terms of the growth and the progress being made. Well, the recent developments with the program now, we're trying to to put together a second team Mm. because in the beginning, we only had the mobile van. Now we have a site here at Catholic Charities. So when we're here at Catholic Charities and new, we have to shut down and maybe go to another location like Office of Reentry or Room in the Inn. We're shutting down this location and we're going out with the mobile van. Guess what? That's not good because most of our patients, they know where we are. They come in walking or they come in because somebody's giving them a ride or they call the bus. We need to be here. So our goal now is to be here and also be out on that van going to other areas in the community and servicing the patients at the same time. So I'm creating a second team so that we can accomplish that. That's awesome. One more question, then we'll switch back over to Keith. You both talked about the different locations, Room in the Inn, and uh, some of the different places that you travel to. Talk about how churches, nonprofits, how how can those be scheduled to be able to kind of reach out and, and use the outreach? We've got the community staff that works with me. I, can, I manage the um, medical part. 
So as a team, we have individuals that do the marketing and they work with us and the, we do the outreach to the churches and we take in the calls from the churches to see what their needs are. And we work closely with trying to help them with uh, events and things like that in the community. Mm -hmm. Keith, talk about how the funding is set up to be able to do everything that we're talking about. Well, it's generosity. Baptist Memorial Health Care, Christ Community Health Services, Tennessee's Health Care Safety Network, Health Resources and Services Administration, private individuals out of the generosity of their heart. But let me say this, nothing is more valuable to us than Jan and her team and the people who are there, people who could probably have careers everywhere or anywhere because the demand is great. And one of the most valuable assets that we have are the people who want to be right where they are. This is a special group of people whom, you know, dealing with a homeless population or dealing with people who you can't always call on a cell phone and do follow up scheduling. And there's some difficulty sometimes you either have to love it and care for them or you just have to say this is a job that I'm using as a stepping stone elsewhere. Jan has been there and wants to be there. She cares. And her team, she recruits and puts people in place who really want to be there. So the funding part, they give us a product that's easy for us to fund, as well as a product that can really, you know, go out and market and be marketed to people who have generosity in their heart and they want to donate. So, you know, it's not a hard, hard sale. We wish we had 10 times more donors. I want to say that, you know, go on record, send money. But most certainly, uh, we, we, we have a great product here. We have a great product. I'm glad you mentioned that because I think the heart of service, the empathy, the kindness, the patience right. um, is a very important piece of the equation that creates the success. And I also think, you know, as you look at the pandemic and just healthcare heroes and mm -hmm. the amount of appreciation that we should be showing for all the sacrifices to, to put yourself on the front lines to be able to do what's right for the health and the well-being of our community. Um, I'm glad you mentioned that because I think that's critically important to this storyline. Carry that into overall because I, I do think as we're coming out of the pandemic and where we are as a society, I do think it's important that we celebrate the healthcare heroes and everyone who is serving on the front line, especially Jan and the team. So, so talk about it, what it means for you to look at your team, the sacrifice, the patience, the empathy, but ultimately what it creates in the community, the fabric that really binds us together. So let me tell you something about Jan before she even jumps in on this question. <laughs> so when the, when, the, when the word pandemic came across the United States of America, and the edict was handed down from government to go home. Where do the homeless go when you tell the homeless to go home? Mm -hmm. And so Jan, knowing and realizing that, reached out to our church. And we literally opened the church up and began to make hot meals available and, and let people come in and go through. And then, you know, Room in the Inn is obviously a partner there as well. But we found a way to have a, a domicile, if you will, or a, a, a tent hospital, if you will, uh, so that the, the people could come in and out even, even before a vaccination. And then where do the vac the where do the homeless go for vaccination? Since we talked about, you know, this whole pandemic thing, you have to find them. You have to go where they are. And then you have to be approachable and available in your stationary location. So, you know, all of this is a part of the idea of of ministry and the idea of service. And when you keep service first, uh, I tell people, you know, I have a, a, a idea that I, I try to share with my church leaders uh, and Baptist shares that we put service in the front seat of the car and we put profit in the back seat of the car. But what I figured out is that everywhere the front seat goes, the back seat has to follow. And so, you know, we, we don't we don't put profit or or cost in front of serving people. And that same empathy that you get at the bedside at Baptist, that you get at the, the, the waiting room at Christ Community, you're going to get that at the van or the mobile unit when they're going around place to place serving people. Yeah. Jan, what would you add to that? 
you know, I think as Keith said, the primary thing is, and, and I think COVID taught us a lot, and especially me too. When we are trying to mission as well as we do, but always trying to make it better, this became even, even more difficult. But what we noticed more was we're, we had fears, but those fears of individuals who were not as knowledgeable about COVID as we were had even more fears. Mm -hmm. So the, one of the first things that we realized was that, hey, we've got to simplify what's going on here. Of course, CDC told us a lot and told us what we needed to do, but CDC didn't say it in a way that our homeless individuals understood. So we knew the wow. most important thing that we had to do first was get them to understand what COVID is and get them to understand what they need to do and what we have to do to get them help and support. So that was one of the first things that we did was we did videos that were simplified and had wordings that they could understand, okay? Uh, no, this is not a, a swarm that's gonna pull your brain out. I mean, all of the things that they had heard, we wanted to be able to address it. And we knew it was important for those things to be addressed by people that they knew and people that they already trusted with their health care. So that was one of the main things that we were able to do. And then to be able to do virtual visits with the providers, still continuing to do that quality health care, although those individuals weren't right there with us in the same room, we kept going. We kept going. Yeah. Well, I greatly appreciate all you and your amazing teams, both of you have done and continue to do every day. Keith, wrap up with website. Where can we go? Obviously, when you talk about funding the mission work, that's extremely important. Getting the awareness out and continuing to uh, raise awareness for the efforts is extremely important as well. So where do we go to learn more? You can go to bmhgiving.org and select the Baptist Operation Outreach Fund. That's important to select that Baptist Operation Outreach Fund. Let me tell you some of the great things that your donations will do, though, and I think this is so important. We often think about how we want our society to look. We want people um, who are homeless to have love and care. That's why we partner with Memphis Union Mission on Poplar Avenue and provide health care for the people who go there. That's why we partner with Room at the Inn on Air Street to make sure that those people have services. And also when we talk about things like HIV or we talk about services that we can help to get people pre-screenings for or help to save the lives of women. Listen, when men often are incarcerated, they come home and they have to go to the office of re-entry. We set up a free clinic in that space so people can get tests and knowledge of their healthcare situation. So we're helping people who would have fallen between the cracks or those who have otherwise been given up on. You know, and we also, I, I gotta say this, whether or not people are aware of it, we have connection to dental services. That was very important that Jan meant, uh, mentioned through Christ Community because a person's self-esteem is attached to the way that they look. And then your mouth is the oral access to your health. I mean, it starts right there. And so people get that service as well. And then we even sit down and pray with people. Yeah. Uh, we talk to them, we love them and care. And that's important because hey, you know, some people just need to know that someone cares. So BMH Giving, bmhgiving.org, select that Baptist Operation Outreach Fund and make a generous donation. Yeah, I love it. I absolutely love it and appreciate everything you and your amazing teams are doing. So Dr. Keith Norman, Jan Taylor, thank you so much for all you do and for coming on the show. Thank you.